So today is a day for inspiration. Today is a day for like invoking power and like trying to improve on your psychic abilities, trying to tap into that third eye, like I said, getting creative ideas, divine messages, all of that kind of stuff. And the invoking power part actually got me today. The topic is servitors. Servitors, yes, servitors. Servitors, for those of you who may not have heard about this word before, which I didn't until I started investigating, <laughs> is a, it is a magical created entity, of course, that is created by you or me, that we actually formulate in our minds and that actually has power in the spiritual realm because of the power that we give it because of the energy that we give to it because of the life that we bring to it ourselves because the servitor's purpose only purpose chief purpose is of course with you the purpose that you give it but the purpose would be to help you solve a problem that you yourself physically have not been able to solve up until now. And some may say it's desperate, which I don't agree with. I think at first it's pretty weird when you think about actually becoming a creator yourself. But we co-create every day with the creator. And so this entity, this being, this creation of yours now would not be there to harm anybody else. It's not there to impose on any of anyone else's free will. It is simply there to help you to achieve a desired outcome. So in watching all of the videos and reading and stuff that I did over the past few days, not has not really been a week yet, but I have come to learn a few things about servitors and, you know, their entire makeup. First of all, as a being, as an entity, you would need to give your servitor a name. Now, I'm sitting low. As you can see, there's a chair behind me. <laughs> it's my bureau and everything, bookshelf, and I am sitting low because sometimes I just feel like sitting low to the ground. So I'm deciding to do this video from this position today. <laughs> anyway, the servitor is to be given a name, like any being would be. Um, it's to be given an appearance and you want to try to be as specific as possible with his or her appearance. Now, servitors, according to everything that I've been looking at, they don't necessarily have to be human. It could be like a golden unicorn. It could be, you know, <laughs> it could be like Goku. It could be, <laughs> it could be uh, uh, Amethyst from Steven Universe. It could be a human, it could be represented as like an angel in angelic form it could look like you it could look like me it is all up to your imagination and your creativity and what actual type of feel do you want to come from this servitor now i would imagine that you know whatever purpose that you would like the servitor to have in its existence, that its appearance should match up to that somewhat, at least as best as possible. So say for instance, if your servitor is going to help you, let's just say, to find true love, for instance, I would imagine her to be very attractive. If you were to be creating this yourself, she would be very attractive. She would have all of those qualities that would seduce a man and like make him 
crave her. Like she would smell really good. She would look really good. She would be tall. She would be shapely. She would have long hair, maybe whatever your, in your vision is of someone that has the love of their life. Someone who that someone who would be able to acquire the love of their life and maintain that love or that passion. So you would want them to look similar to what it is that their goal is. Um, I am actually in the process of thinking up a servitor, but I am taking my time with it. I basically have all of its characteristics, all of its appearance and stuff, even the name, which I'm still kind of conflicted on because I have two names, which I think I'll turn into three names, but she can have four names if I wanted to. Then, of course, like I said, after the appearance portion of it, you also now, the most important part of it is giving it its ultimate purpose. And this is where it gets tricky because you have to sit down and go within yourself for a while and think about the things that you most need help with, the more things that you most need to be solved, the things, the problems that you're having. And think about why you could be having these problems. And that is the one of the ways that will help you think about a better, more defined purpose for your servitor because you need to know the reason why the problem exists in the first place so that you know, okay, well, if my problem is not being able to, say, save money, I'm just using examples here, okay? <laughs> your servitor, why is it that you are not able to save money? It's because, well, you're not making enough or... Oh, I'm sorry, that's what's up. <laughs> Usually when it does that, it stops the video. But anyway, now that you realize why, why, like I said, is the why. You're not able to save money because, say, for instance, you're not making enough money. Or you don't have, yeah, enough sources of income. Or you have too many bills, too many expenses. So your servitor, one of their purposes would be now to actually bring you added sources of income. Or, or to help free up some of the expenses that you're having to protect certain parts of your home from calamity or chaos that causes you to spend more money. Whatever, you have to think about it specifically in order to give your servitor an exact, precise purpose. And your servitor, the thing about it that's so great is that they don't have to have one purpose. You can have one general servitor that serves all of your purposes. You can have three or four servitors that serve different purposes. But to me, I think that gets a little confusing because if you have four created entities to call upon, you know, where does that leave the angels? Where does that leave <laughs> the other spiritual beings that are actually, that have been around, that actually exist before you? have brought this created being into existence. So to make it a little simpler for those who may not be as advanced in this, I think it would be best to start off with one. And then that one, like I said, you can give it a general task. You could task could be total protection of your home, yourself, and your family. That could be to actually help you to create wealth in your life, to actually bring you more opportunities for wealth. That servitor could be, like I said, to help you find a lover, partner, soulmate, or whatever, if you believe in soulmates, you know. <laughs> then some people have habits. Some people have poor habits. So your servitor could be to help, you know, ward you away from drunkenness or... <laughs> <laughs> you know, bad company, that's protection, of course, but you have to be specific in what type of protection you want, spiritual protection, you want physical protection, what emotional protection, what kind of protection is it that you want? So sit down, get a book, piece of paper, if you have a book of shadows, you know, get that, and take your time because this is a really personal thing, and this is 
this is you don't want really anybody else involved in this process because it like I said it is just specifically for you is to do your bidding it is your servant it is your newly created servant and the thing about it is you don't even have to fear you don't have to fear that it's going to like get out of hand and start you know doing its own will such as Lucifer did like <laughs> you 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 stop that by giving it a defined time that it's going to exist for you give it you give it uh, you define what actions or what words you would speak that brings it out of its hibernated state that it's gonna awaken it that you have to actually first give it life because just your imagination of your servitor you can have all of the details already put down but until you give it actual life it's dormant it's just like sleeping it's like and it's it's in darkness right now because you also have to give your servitor a home <laughs> I know right don't forget this is this is really this is really deep spiritual stuff this is actual creation so like every other creation they have a home as well where are they going to be or where is it going to be when not in use because you don't want it to just be like roaming all around the place just you know with endlessly with its purpose its purpose is also it's great but when not in use its purpose could conflict with whatever it is that you're doing at this particular time so say for instance if you're if you're it's a lot of examples that I could use to say how this would conflict say for instance if you have a child let's say you have a soldier let's say you have a guard right he's like a royal guard <laughs> he's your royal guard this is your servitor now and like you know his job is to protect you his job is to is to actually protect but you gave him two tasks protect you as well as to attract let's say dignitaries or higher officials to your clergy or your space your meeting room or whatever it is right this is just a random example but now here it is you are sleeping or you are meeting with someone who may not be uh, one of those dignitaries and here's here it is your royal guard comes like marching in like <laughs> No, I gotta protect you at all costs. This is all cause. This is not like you know a dignitary. He's a normal. He's a layman. He's not you know ah, get out of the way. And he's like you know, fiercely protecting you. <laughs> and you actually want to talk to this person, but here it is. Your royal guard is so on the job that he's not letting you. So this is why your royal guard, your servitor needs a place to chill a resting place like where you can say okay you know your work now is like done for the day and I bid you adieu I send you back to your your residence <laughs> or your hibernating place until I call upon you again thank you and you know whatever <laughs> so you need to like think about where this home is going to be the home could be imagined as a place that is not real. It could be a cave. It could be up in a tree somewhere. It could be a favorite tree that you had as a child. It could be on a beach. It could be anything that you imagine. Like I said, if the servitor, if the servitor can be imagined as Goku or as a unicorn with a purple horn or something, obviously your servitor's home can be equally as fancified equally as you know far-fetched and out there but it has to be something that resonates with you it has to be something that you feel comfortable with the idea of it has to be something that is like you know you can visualize it easily because this is the whole process the whole idea of servitors is based on your visualization ability and that's what I take from this and so if you're not really good at, at, at conjuring stuff up in your mind as yet you might want to practice a little more with that do some other rituals and stuff some candle magic and things like that that's good that can I help you to better imagine you know better envision things that are 
not seen with real eyes or with physical eyes, seen with a real eye instead of these eyes. So now sustenance. That's another part of it because like every other creation or being, it needs to be fed. It needs energy. It needs it needs, you know, basically to eat, but it doesn't eat food. You see? So what does it eat? <laughs> this was a weird part for me, but as I listened, like I said, as I got deeper into this, it, it made sense. But basically the most basic form of sustenance for it could be your gratitude, could be your appreciation of its fine work that it's doing for you. Anytime that you see a sign that something, some synchronicity that shows you that something is coming closer to now your goal being achieved, being met, like you say, oh my gosh, I know it's like, you know, my servitor is helping me. It's great, you know, keep the, the good work. Then something like that could be used as sustenance for your servitor. Or say, for instance, when there is anybody coming at you with negativity, you know, and you notice it and it's turned around. Like I said, servitor can be fed by that. You don't want it. I don't, I would not want personally my servitor to be fed on negative energy. So I would imagine gratitude. I would imagine gratitude as it's one of its main, sorry, I'm just moving this camera. It's throwing around a lot. I guess gratitude as its main uh, source of energy. Of course, the sun, I would imagine the moon, full moon is coming up very soon. So like things like that, I think would be best suited. Then of course, you know, um, for me, thinking about how I like singing, I like to dance, I like to sing. <laughs> I'm a very dramatic person, <laughs> so I actually imagine my servitor being fed by me singing, and so that means I have to know, <laughs> I have to take care of my voice, I have to sing really good, <laughs> okay? So every time I'm singing a song, a passionate song that I really loved, whether it's a modern song, an older song, and I'm getting that wonderful, you know, that wonderful feeling that the music gives you and stuff when you really love a song and it hits home for you and stuff. That is one of the things that's also going to serve my servitor. That's going to feed my servitor. Now, next up, you also, oh, speaking while speaking on of, of, of feeding, I forgot to mention with the home part. With the home part, like how I'm wearing this crystal, like you could actually say that this would be the home of your servitor, like you can wear it on you. The Whatever its home is, it could be in a piece of jewelry, it could be in a piece of furniture, it could be something right in your garden, it could be, you know. So think creatively and think as you get more comfortable with this idea the thoughts, the creative process is going to get better and better. And I know thinking back about it, some people might say this is wrong. This is like, you know, <laughs> devilish to do, but you're not harming anybody. You know, we imagine our outcomes each and every day. I have been studying new thought, like Neville Goddard and stuff and like metaphysics with Thomas Troward and like, um, oh, what's his name? Oh my goodness. Mental science. Oh, the mental science. Neil, Neil, Neil Donald Walsh, Emerson, all of these people and stuff like that, right? And they talk about the power of our minds. And for a long time, a long time in history, people have known the power of our, of our minds to be, you know, as good as the mind of the creator itself because everything is mind nothing is here without mind first and so with your mind being able to do something like this to help you to serve your purposes better of course people would say well you could just call on god for that 
But the same thing as with the angels, I feel like God has all power, but God is, to me, more associated with spirit than with the physical. The physical is more of the creation's duty. And that's why I practice, because that's what I believe. People may think there is, you know, some darkness into this. This is nothing dark. This is just, you know, magic. That's what magic's all about. It's about self-empowerment. It's about not putting your power into the hands of something unseen. It is actually taking it into your own hands and making it real. So now, like I said, since I moved on from the home of it now, to call upon it, you have to set a specific phrase, a specific word or set of words, a sentence or whatever that you will use when you need for it to come out of its hibernating space. So you can say, I call upon you and the name that you gave it three times. And they say three times because it actually gives you more mental uh, strength. It gives the visualization more power when you say it three times. It is, of course, the magical number, but it is also the reaffirming of it in your mind and to yourself, out of your mouth. So, and then there is a woman that I actually watched. She mentioned that whenever she calls upon her servitor, she showers it. She showered it in like, you know, well, she wasn't talking about a servitor. She was actually talking about this wealth angel, wealth god. But she showered it in pink love and light and like glitter and stuff like that. And so you can do the same thing for your servitor. Whenever you call upon it, you say, now I welcome you. You call it three times and you say, I shower you while you're envisioning this actual process happening in your mind with love and light and lavender or whatever color you want to use that is that represents that goodness for you and tell it to go out now and do my work thank you for your wonderful assistance and until i call you back you know go now so i don't know <laughs> i don't know my servitor is going to be like when she goes out i i don't know if i should give her a ferrari <laughs> something to go in <laughs> but she she's very magical she can walk through walls of course she can like move water and all of that stuff like she's strong but i want her to be also very feminine and you know like the very essence of the goddess then, of course, this is very important. This part is very important. Let me just underline that there. To destroy it. <laughs> because you always need to remember that you have to have that power. That you have that power and that you have to keep that power over the servitor. Because you don't want it to go out and run rogue. Once its purpose has been completed, you need to bring it back and you need to get rid of it. And the same visualization process is going to take place here. So to destroy it, you're going to actually think about a scenario that is going to actually put it out of being. So like for me, I would imagine my servitor is having a home in some type of orb somewhere, right? I haven't been totally precise as to exactly where that is yet. But so for me, I would imagine this, this orb... It's like a bubble being popped. Like you just pff, stick a pin in it and it's pff, it's gone and she's gone. And like you tell it, you call its name three times once again. Just like when you're summoning it, you call its name three times once again. And you say, now, guess what? You know, your wonderful work has been completed. Your task has been completed fully and faithfully. And I thank you so much for it. But now it is time for you to go for good. You know, and you say it, like I said, three times, you say, and, you know, I bid you goodbye forever. Like, you are done with that. And then, when that bubble is gone, 
in your mind, you picture it actually being gone. It's no more. It is no more. So this wonderful being that you created is going to be a little sad moment <laughs> to know, it's a, especially if you have given it like a, a, a longer time frame to live because you can set the time frame for a day. You could set the life, its lifespan, I mean, for a day. It could be for a year or it could just be an indefinite lifespan for the servitor. It's just completely continuously continuously working to perform your task every day you can it's, it's all up to you it's just like I said a personal thing but to destroy it you need to say that it's gone and you need to like I say stump your foot your right foot or something afterward to say this is completed it's gone it's no more and then just take the thoughts out of your mind, you tear up the paper or whatever, or you put a big X with a Sharpie or something through it and it's gone. You move on to the next one. <laughs> so I thought this video was definitely, you know, something good to talk about today because I am all for personal empowerment. Like I said, this is not to be used for harm. Not to be used for harm. It is to be used for good, for your good, okay? And then there was another little note that I have written down here that, you know, I was watching one of the videos, one of the most, the more in-depth videos that I was watching talks about how when you're thinking this up now, thinking this whole being up, you meditate and you call upon it three times when you're ready for it, when you're finished almost just completely done with creating it with the whole idea of what it's going to be you call upon it three times for three different days so you want to take like today's Monday so you do this again on Wednesday then do it again on Friday that would make the three days that you're calling upon it three times and telling it you need it to go to work for you and that is going to actually start to give it power that is actually going to make it become more realistic in your mind more realistic and actual being so guys I hope I have touched on all of the important parts of this topic today and if you are interested in this idea I would recommend that you go and research a little more on it and like I said I'm still in the process of creation right now so I am <laughs> not really there yet but I'm pretty close but doing the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram and stuff like that by doing that it already starts to make you feel like a little more powerful a little more hands-on in what's happening in your life and I think this definitely would be a next step to help you in your quest towards achieving what it is that you want to manifest in your life so thanks guys for watching and even though I'm crouched down here <laughs> I felt like I was a little more comfortable than normally you know so if you like give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment I don't want any bad comments because I probably won't answer them or you know <laughs> I I just don't have time for that like and if you're confused or you think I don't mind the opinion so much just I don't need no I don't need the attacks the negative attacks I don't need none of that so love and light peace and love blessed be namaste until I come back with another provocative topic <laughs> bye